Hi, so I wanted you to watch this video before you answer the questions about trifles. And uh, so I'm going to kind of start with the first exercise and kind of talk through what it will be asking you and see if that will help you prepare for taking these exercises. Just be sure that you take your time with all of these. And if you have a, a, a question where you can choose more than one choice, maybe it'll, I'll tell you there are two of these that are correct or three of these that are correct. Do not check more than what is asked for because if you're doing that, then you're just guessing or trying to just uh, you know put them all down. Obviously you would get some of them right and some of them wrong. So it's designed so that you aren't tempted to do that and so uh, that you'll think about it longer. Uh, so be careful because you could, if you, if you do something like that, it could go into negative points. So you don't want to do that. So make sure you read all the instructions on each question. Uh, and uh, you can print these out. And so uh, in the way that you do that uh, is uh, you, you go to the bottom of the page, kind of click there, and then go back up to the top of the page and it'll select all and you should be able to print if that's what you would like to do. So uh, what we want to do first is talk about the first exercise and you want to take these in order. The thing about play analysis, this is what you're about to do, is that it's, it's not, there's not one way into it. So it's difficult. It's, uh, it's a little easier to learn by discussion or to at least by listening to people talk about it. Um, but uh, by doing it this way and sort of giving you stair steps here of how to to get to the truth of the play. So, and it's a short play, but there's a great deal that's packed into the short play. So uh, the first one, the first exercise is about plot versus story. And I do give you page numbers in your text to be referring to, so please do that and review that material so that you can understand what the questions are asking. And even though these are multiple choice and kinds of questions and that sort of thing, that doesn't mean you don't take your time with them. You need to take your time with those kinds of questions. So as I said, we, we don't want you to end up with a negative grade. So, so um, the first one is plot versus story. And what's important to remember here is that when we think of story, right, in a larger sense, the story uh, it has this beginning, middle, and end, uh, just as well as a plot does. But let's just say, like, if I was going to look at the story of my life, right, my life began, right, well, really at conception or birth, however you want to look at it, but it began, we'll say, at birth, um, and, and has come up to this point in time. And there's been many, many events that have happened in there. If I wanted to write a play um, for that, but I would take it out of the story. If I wanted to make it biographical and just, I would just pull a, a slice out of that. So I could start that plot line that comes out of my larger story of my life in lots of different places. I could start when I was born, I could start when I was five years old and started kindergarten and we had just moved into a new, a new town. Uh, I could start it, you know, with my first date. I could start it with uh, graduating college. I could start it with becoming a mother. I could start with becoming a grandma. I could start, I could start it with the pandemic, right? So uh, it, it, you need to understand that plot is different than story. So uh, an, another thing to, to realize about this idea of plot versus story is with trifles, you want to, and in this exercise, you're looking specifically at trifles and you're separating those things that happened before the plot begins. So in other words, there are things that are revealed throughout the play that happened before the play ever began. So you want to learn to separate what was in the larger story, what's already happened, right, before uh, these, these group of, of people, this small group of people have come to this house. What has happened before then? You know, separate that from the things that actually happen during the plot, which is pretty much what happens right in front of the audience's eyes, right? So that's what you're doing here. Separate plot from story. Um, a, a film term that's often used that people might be more familiar with is backstory. 
So that might help you a little bit backstory. What are these characters' backstories? And that goes into that larger story, whereas the plot is smaller, okay, that comes out or is derived or based on some aspect or aspects of, of that larger story. All right, so in the second exercise, you have um, given circumstances, and this is a term that Stanislavski created, and you've read, um, you, you'll be reading more about him, but um, it was, he created it for actors, and it's in in the chapter that uh, you've read, so um, given circumstances is the idea that uh, if I was going to play, let's say, Mrs. Hale, that I would have to study Mrs. Hale's thoughts, her, her actions, her past, whatever I know about it, I would have to take that out of the play and realize that I am bringing that past specific to Mrs. Hale to this play, all right? So I have to bring that with me. And that's important for actors to understand. Um, it helps you in play analysis too in understanding each character's motivation, purpose, um, how their past and, and present and even foreseeable future are all impacting them at this moment in time in how they're responding to what's going on. Uh, we all do that, all right? Whatever your circumstances are during this pandemic, this larger circumstance has many other circumstances, but we bring that with us, say, to our classes. We're bringing that with us. We're not separated from it. Okay, so neither are the characters. The characters are tied to their past, uh, their present, and anything that you might be looking forward to as far as, not, not hopefully necessarily, but whatever they know, um, they have to move towards in the future, or they know that it's supposed to happen in the future. So, but with given circumstances, what you'll do is you'll have this set of sentences in each question, and you're looking for the the statements that belong to each character. And those are written in first person. So as an actor, what I would do is I would say, as Mrs. Hale, I would be speaking in first person. And I would say, you know, I, I, I think this, or I've done this, or this is a statement. In other words, that's what we do as actors. We try to pretend we're those people and we speak as if we are those characters. So uh, that's how it's written. It's written as if that character is speaking, not a line in the play, but a thought that is related to the given circumstances of those respective characters. All right, and, and feel free to send me any questions or if you wanna set up a phone call. This, because this section in play analysis, I mean, for some it's fine, but it's always been, you know, one of those things that um, has been a little more challenging, I would say, out of the semester, but it's foundational in understanding what actors, directors, designers, and all of the artists of all the theater do. They have to start with this. All right, so, uh, the, the third, the third exercise. So you kind of want to stop and review what you've learned, you know, so if you got something incorrect, you want to look at those results and make sure you understand those each time before you move on to the next one. So in the third one, when you get there, uh, you're looking for different, and again, I give you page numbers in your textbook to help you with this, but you're looking for things like point of attack. So you're looking at structure here of the play. Uh, inciting incident, and again, point of attack is when in the larger story does that play begin? In other words, what is the action that takes place in front of the audience at the very beginning? Where does that plot line start out of the larger story? So that's what you're looking for, a point of attack. Uh, inciting incident happens either very close to the beginning of the play or even can happen earlier than that, okay? So, but it's, it, it's an, an inciting incident is something that gets the play going, it gets things moving, it takes off. Because of that inciting incident, that is why these people are here doing what they're doing, okay? All right, um, also you look at super objectives, which have to do with um, the overall goals of the characters. Uh, you, you'll look at that, you'll also look at um, exposition, you know, which character gives exposition, which is background information. So you want to 
uh, make sure that you understand point of attack and the incident super objective, which again, that's the overall goal. Every character has a goal. Again, not everyone in this, in the, not every character in this play is um, our main character. So, so you really have four primary characters. Okay. Um, and then the fourth one, the fourth and uh, final exercise is where we kind of tie a lot of things together that we've been looking at already and we're trying to pinpoint what you know what the theme is what the primary conflict is who are the protagonists who are the antagonists what do they each want how how does the antagonist get in the protagonist way uh, what is really happening in this plot uh, what is happening here um, you'll look at some you'll do a little research for um, some historical background about the the play, uh, when it was written, who wrote it, what was going on at the time that influenced the play. Um, so you'll look for that information. It's all pretty easy to find. And uh, you will also um, look at the ideas of the world of the play that the characters are living in. How is what is the world of the play if you take into account the characters or circumstances but also this time period uh, when this play was written and produced you know, what was going on then that was having this impact and what does it mean about the world of the play you know the the characters in the play who are they how do they operate what is their world like? If we talked about what our world like was now, let's say as an example for the pandemic, you know, how would we describe what living in that world is like? And so you want to look at their context for their world because that's important. Because in 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 a play, right, in a well-made play, generally what you're looking for is then how was the world of the play changed? Because the play goes, the world of the play changes. It's different at the beginning than it is at the end. So you want to kind of look for that. Now you're not writing essay questions. You're choosing from different things that I'm suggesting. So, uh, you know, make sure you read carefully all through those different um, statements that I make for you to choose from. So that, that goes for all of those. Uh, one of the things as you kind of try to tie all of this together is uh, when we look at stories traditionally um, western for you know, culture and western um, format style and and structure um, you want to you can ask the simple question who in the play right or story wants what and why is it hard All right that kind of gives you the conflict what the real conflict is. So um, that's just kind of a simple way of, of getting going at the play too, as you kind of sit back after you do this and see if you can kind of uh, make that gel. Okay, so uh, again, um, if you need to watch this video again, certainly feel free to, and let me know if you have any questions as you work through this, but do take your time and do read carefully. Um, and again, I will hope to uh, hear from you soon, and I hope that everyone does well on this and that we that we can move forward in a, in a positive way with it. And I know this is a challenge to do it this way. So um, let me know if you have questions. Thanks. Bye.